pain. Researchers comparing the effectiveness of two pain medications randomly selected a group of patients who had been complaining of a certain kind of joint pain. They randomly divided these people into two groups, then administered pain relievers. Uh, they, of the 112 people in, who received medication A, 84 said the pain reliever was effective. Of 108 people in the other group, 66 said pain reliever B was effective. So we've got two groups. I'm going to call them group A and group B, but based on their medicine. And in group A, 84 of 112 said it was effective. In group B, uh, 66 of 108 said it was effective. Part A asks us to create a 95% confidence interval for the percent of people who may get relief from this kind of joint pain from using medication A. All right, so this is just a single one proportion confidence interval, meaning that our 95% confidence interval will be p hat plus or minus z star times the square root of p hat q hat over n. So in this case, for group A, our p hat for group A is 84 divided by 112. So that's 0 0.75, 75%. And in group B, 66 out of 108 uh, is going to be 0 0.61, 611, okay? So for part A, it's creating a 95% confidence interval for medication A. It's going to be 0 0.75 plus or minus our Z star, 1.96, times the square root of 0 0.75 times 0 0.25, 1 minus 0 0.75, divided by 112. So this becomes 0 0.75 plus or minus, let's do this, 0 0.75 times 0 0.25, divided by 112, take the square root of that, times 1.96. So you have 0 0.75 plus or minus 0 0.08002. So I'm just going to leave it at 0.75 plus or minus 0.08 and that gives me on the lower end 0.67 and on the upper end 0.83 that's my 95 percent confidence interval for medication B we're going to make another 95 percent confidence interval this time centered at 0.611 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.611 times 1 minus 0 0.611, 0 0.389, divided by 108. And so I have 0 0.611 times 0 0.389 divided by 108. Square root of that times 1.96, I have 0.611 plus or minus 0.092. Okay, and that gives me uh, on the lower end, 0.519, and on the upper end, 0 0.703. So part C asks, do they overlap? And the answer is yes. On here, it goes all the way down to 0.67, and over here, our confidence intervals goes all the way up to 0.703. So there is a little bit of overlap. Yes, there is some overlap. D asks us to create a 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportions. So that's going to be p1 hat minus p2 hat plus or minus z star times the standard error of the difference, which is p1 hat q1 hat divided by n1 plus p2 hat q2 hat divided by n2. 
So I have 0.75 minus 0.611 plus or minus z star 1.96 times everything in here, which is going to be 0.75 times 0.25 divided by 112 plus 0.611 times 0.389 divided by 108. All right, so this is going to get a little bit messy, but let's see. Take the square root of that times 1.96, and we get uh, plus or minus 0.122. And over here, I have 0.75 minus 0 0.611, 0 0.139. So my confidence interval minus 0.122 gives me 0 0.017 on the lower end to 0.261. So that's my 95% confidence interval for the difference. All right, part E asks, does the interval contain zero? No, zero is not in the interval, which means we have evidence that there is a difference. And then F says, why do the results in parts C and E seem contradictory? If we want to compare the effectiveness of these two pain relievers, which is the correct approach and why? So in C, we found that there is overlap between these two confidence intervals. And in part D, we found that we have evidence of a difference. So it seems like over here in part C, that because there's overlap, um, we might think that the two pain relievers could be equally effective, but then when we do the confidence interval for the difference, we find that they're not equally effective. So the correct way to do it is in part D, uh, confidence interval for a difference. Okay, And the reason is because parts A and part B take each standard error, this p hat, q hat over n, individually and separately. Over here in part D, we're combining those two together through this formula. And if you try to just uh, look at the confidence intervals by themselves, it's, it's not going to work out that way. So the way we did it in part D is the correct way when we are trying to compare two, two separate groups here.